This is the never aging man. It is, it is somebody that I virtually met about like 15 years ago on a website called New Persia. That, well, that's not a very bad introduction. Can we cut and redo that? There was a global Persian website at the time about 15 years ago. That was very cool, actually. Um, it was a very good way to build a community. So shout out to the people of newpersia.com. And I just remember that there was files on. He was very, very, um, very well known on that site. And you'll know why in a second, because he's a damn good looking dude. And more importantly, he's a damn good looking dude. Uh, excuse me, damn good person uh, with a lot of great energy and got love and positivity and always with a big smile on his face. So it is my pleasure to welcome Fazan to the program. Fazan, durud va no ruzet mubarak. Hi, Iman. How are you? I'm doing well, thank you. Uh, thank you so much for having me here. First of all, I would like to send a message to all the Persians around the world or whoever who celebrates uh, the start of the new year in the spring. Uh, That's right, man. First of all, I appreciate you taking the time and sitting next to this beautiful half scene. Where, where are you looking? Are you in Sweden right now, correct? Yes. Right now I'm in Sweden, Stockholm. Uh, we're celebrating uh, the new year with my family and we had, you know, lovely get together. And now I'm here with you guys. Nice, man. Well, we started at New Persia and now we're both wearing blue together. So, you know, we're some yeah. kind of distant brothers, you know? Yes. Um, I see you got the dimples as well. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Even though I think in the last seven hours, my beard has grown significantly, I think, you know, <laughs> during this live stream. But, uh, yeah. but first of all, um, so first of all, I'm happy that you're spending uh, solitary with your family. Uh, it, Sweden is your home, correct? Like in general, like that's where you grew yes. up? Yes, I was uh, five years old when I came to Sweden. And uh, since then I've been living here. Obviously I've been traveling around the world a lot, but uh, this is where I'm based. Stockholm is like home, but of course, uh, Iran is in my heart. That's beautiful. Man. When, when was the last time that you were in Iran, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, I was there, let me see, it's twin, twin. I was there around three years ago. Okay. Yeah. Do, you, do, you, do you have a fond memory of a Nowruz in the past, whether it was inside of Iran or outside of Iran? Like, what's your best memory of Nowruz of all time? Well, the best memory, of course, is to be with the family, you know, get together and, you know, share this uh, special moment. Like, uh, the same, same as uh, our other New Year, New Year, you know, when you're with your loved ones and uh, you're having a great time together. And, you know, it means a lot so that we, you know, still living here for many years, we still keep the traditions and, uh, you know, never forget where we come from. That's true. And you know what, like uh, Sweden, once a year, even during a pandemic, uh, which you guys did a couple of days ago, once a year, Sweden does one of the biggest uh, gatherings of Iranians from around the world with your Charsha Masuri event. Uh, yes. which, which you co-hosted uh, this past week. And yeah. then as if you didn't have enough talents, I saw <laughs> you break out singing on stage too, you know? So kind of kind of tell me a little bit about uh, this huge festival. I, it's called, it's called Esfenden, what is it called? Eldfesten, it means the, the festival of fire. <laughs> oh, okay, beautiful. Okay, so to, to tell me about that and tell me about the experience of uh, hosting that last weekend or a few sure. days ago. Yeah, so uh, it's the biggest uh, uh, Char Suri celebration, the Festival of Fire, because every year, usually around 20 to 30,000 people gathers, Persians, mostly, uh, you know, in the same place, and uh, artists from all around the world comes, and, you know, families get together, they jump over uh, bonfires, eat some uh, traditional good food, and, uh, you know, having a great time. But unfortunately, this year, because of the pandemic, uh, there was a lot of restrictions, but they still managed to create uh, this event. Uh, but we did it online without any audience. And it was obviously you know, a great experience to still be able to send out this positive message and energy to all the Persian speaking uh, people around the world and whoever who celebrates you know, the spring and Charsham Basuri. It's not only our, uh, us Iranians, you know, it's the Iraqi people, Turkish, uh, Afghanistan, Tajikistan, Azerbaijan. So, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's an important event and multicultural and uh, a lot of fun. And I'm really you know, honored and excited to be hosting it. 
And as you know, I always loved entertainment and uh, I'm trying to do whatever I can to send out positive message and positive energy to people who like to follow me. No, absolutely. And you do a great job with that, man, honestly. And it's very genuine, it's very authentic, which is, uh, which is why I wanted to make sure that you're part of this program too, because the whole purpose of this, uh, but the whole purpose of this program is to do the same exact thing, you know, is to, is to spread out love. And so I, I genuinely handpick people that are genuine people that are doing some awesome things, you know, and so you certainly are on the list of people. What I, what I really like about the, the Chasha Masuri event that you guys have in Sweden is that it really is not just the biggest one, but in my opinion, or at least as far as I know, the most inclusive one. You, you mentioned all the nationalities yes. uh, that, that are involved, like, some people, some, some, and this is not like a knock to anybody else that does it, but some other Charles Shambasuris, they might say it, but it still yeah. only brings majority Persian. You know, even yeah. uh, I'm I, just like me too. When we do our Charles Shambasuri events in DC, it was yeah. mostly Persians, but that's because yeah. we just wouldn't promote it enough of different cultures. What is it about this one in Sweden? What are they doing right? How are they tapping into uh, our other brothers and sisters in neighboring countries that celebrate Noruz? that maybe people outside of Sweden can learn so that, you know, yeah. everybody feels more inclusive. Like, like one, one of the things is that uh, they try to make it more international. So uh, different people, even if you don't understand Persian, for example, we used to be speaking of both English and Farsi. So people who doesn't only uh, understand Persian can also uh, feel that they're part of it. Also, we're bringing artists from different nationalities Obviously, this year was a little bit harder, but, you know, we had from like Armenistan, uh, Kurdistan, uh, you know, uh, different parts of Iran, you know, singers from uh, different uh, parts. So it's not only Persians. And sometimes we even bring, you know, Swedish bands and, uh, you know, uh, people from the Swedish government come. So you, you feel more united and you feel more welcome from uh, not only if you're Iranian, if you only just want to go out and have some fun and uh, understand uh, the culture, the message, the food, the music. So you got different stuff going on, you know? So, so I think that's the main goal uh, to try to reach out to as many as possible because this is not a, it's very important to let everyone know this is not a religious uh, event. Uh, this is a traditional event going back 4,000 years. Uh, actually, you know, everybody says Charles Ambassuri is now 1,400, but our Charles Ambassuri is, 3,579, I think, right now. That, that's the year. That's the real year coming from uh, Z Tamar. Zerashen. Exactly. So it's, it's a very you know, beautiful message if you think about it. You're jumping over fires. You want the, all the bad things that happened last year to burn out. And you want to take the good uh, and positive energy from the fire and bring it into the new year. So I think it's a very beautiful message that could be shared with everyone. And who, who doesn't love the start of the spring and the sun and <laughs> the light coming back to the world, yeah. especially, you know, this year uh, when we had this uh, pandemic, you really want to burn all the bad stuff from last year and start a fresh new year with good energy. No, for sure. So actually speaking of the past year, uh, yeah. I would love for you to kind of reflect on the past year. What, what are like some of the things that you took away from it? What's like, what are some of the, because obviously it was a tough year for many of us, but yeah, uh, I think that a lot of people were able to take away some really good things from it, you know, and that's how you kind of deal with life in general, that even when life throws you some bad things that you kind of, you know, yeah. find a silver lining. What was the silver lining that you found in the past year? Well, oof, I, I try to now send out positive message, but now when you're asking about last year, is obviously was one of my, <laughs> you will laugh because I had so many bad years in my life as well, but it was definitely one of the worst years in my life. Oh, wow. uh, last year, yeah. So um, when, when this, like everything happened in less than two months in my life, you know, uh, I, uh, you know, uh, all the job stuff started to get canceled, like for everyone else and, you know, projects uh, get postponed. Uh, I didn't have, you know, income. I lost a lot of money, saved money that I was investing in funds and stuff. Uh, I got sick myself. I got really bad, you know, COVID. You know, they say that 95% of the people won't get any um, symptoms. Yeah. Uh, like 95, we will get, uh, you know, mild symptoms or no symptoms. And only 5% will get symptoms. Out of those 5%, 
15 percent of mostly men get the symptoms that i got you know i got extremely uh pain for many days like uh, i was screaming uh, like it was some like someone was jumping on me so that uh, you know uh, uh affected me a lot and i was sick for three weeks uh, over 40 degrees of fever and uh and i was like oh i'm a healthy man you know i work out and everything but it destroyed me so uh I, you know you except all this uh, mentally stuff about the economy and all the work and everything so this happened it affects you physically as well it also affects you mentally you know you stop working out and uh you feel weak and it took me six weeks till i got back to my normal strength yeah. and uh with all of this going on uh you know after that, uh, unfortunately my mother got sick uh she got covid and uh oof. so uh yeah she got covid and it went so fast you know uh she went there in a few hours she was in hospital and uh, i had to uh you know i stayed uh, I went, even that i wasn't allowed i fight it and i got into the hospital and i spent uh 24 hours with her uh, for five days, and uh, unfortunately, she passed away. I'll be very honest, man. I, I actually did not know that, and I'm, yeah. I'm so I'm so extremely sorry that uh, that this is the impact that the COVID had to you. And uh, may may she yeah. rest in peace, my friend. And then, um, yeah. Oof, sorry, one second. <clears throat> yeah, and then not enough with all of that. Uh, I also got uh, I broke up with my ex that we were living for two and a half years. Uh, so it, all of this happened in uh, less than two months. So it was a disaster. But um, I'm glad uh, you know I still had this strength inside of me and uh, I kept going. I never give up like I never do. And I finished this year actually stronger than ever. And now I'm, uh, thank God, you know, just continuing and, uh, you know, trying to do the best. I was thinking, you know, uh, what can I do uh, during this moment uh, when you don't, when nothing else is happening, you can start to, again, you know, work on yourself, build on uh, things that you always want to do that you never had time to do. And, uh, you know, think about the future and uh, because this is the whole world stopped. So now you basically have extra time that you will never get again, because when the whole world is stopped, you don't miss out on anything. So this is exactly, you know, something I think a lot of people should actually be appreciate as well to get this extra time to do the things, work on things that they never actually had time or they postponed in their life. And that's exactly what I did. And, you know, I started new businesses. I started new uh, things that I love to do. And uh, hopefully I'll keep going and <laughs> continue doing that. Well, I mean, Fazal, I mean, first of all, I really appreciate you being so candid about everything. I mean, obviously it was a, an incredibly challenging year for you. So my question is, yeah. where, where did you find the, the strength? And, and like, because, you know, a lot of people, unfortunately, mm -hmm. when these kind of tragedies or trials and tribulations happen, yeah. I mean, they go to a really, really dark hole, and yeah. then you, you know you hear the, the the war stories where they take take their life, or um, you know they really just go into a bad, bad, bad place in their life, whether it's alcohol or drugs. How yeah. how were you able to use you know this tra tragedy that's happening around you, but yeah. to stay positive to get the strength? Because I think that it, your story is, is extremely inspirational because I've seen from what I saw was such incredible growth for you as a host and entertainer that I didn't even know of all this hardship that you were going through along with your family behind the yeah. scenes. So, so yeah. you're, you're, you're an inspirational story, brother. And I, I want to make sure that, that, you. that your story is something that will now help other people, uh, you know, go, go through it as well. So mm -hmm. where do you find it? Where, where, when, when somebody is at <clears throat> in a very dark place in their life, wh mm -hmm. where do they turn to? Where did you find your strength to move on and, and get through this? See, uh, I'm not going to lie, you know, it's very normal that you, after something, this, uh, you know, all this terrible stuff happened to you, you fall down, you break down, you, you go, you, you, you lose yourself. But the most important thing is to uh, not to let it drag. You know, we're all humans, we all have feelings. Obviously, you will get hurt, you will get destroyed, you will 
you know, you want uh, you stop to start to stop to care about everything, and uh, you might do stupid stuff. But the most important thing is not to drag it. You know, we all need that time to let our emotions out, and everyone doing it in different ways. But the most important thing is not to let it drag out. You have to bounce back. No matter how many times you fall, you have to get up. The most, the one thing that a lot of people, you know, don't do is that they don't get up. They just lay down and that and the time go when the time goes and goes and then you say suddenly fuck sorry uh, I, I lost a, I lost you know a lot of uh, I lost a lot of uh, you know time and years in my life and you know I didn't do anything. This is I think what I find my strength uh, is that I don't let the time pass too much and whatever no matter how bad it gets. I start to, you know, reload, refocus, and, you know, start to look at the future and mostly think about your hopes and dreams because without hopes and dreams, we're nothing. And I think if you have big hopes, big dreams, and you have, uh, you know, strong passion for the things that you want to do, then uh, that will help you to get up and, you know, keep going. And uh, I think, you know, that's exactly what I've done. Uh, also, it helps, <laughs> not in a good way, but yeah, it helps to, to, you know, to have some experience. And, you know, my life has been <laughs> so much up and down. And once you have um, felt and know the dark grounds that you can fall into and how far you can fall, then you start to learn also how to climb up again. Yeah, man. I mean, I, you know, in, in, in a future conversation, um, and I don't know how open you've been about it, so I don't know. But but obviously, I I I I knew about the story that you that you've gone through, but I don't know all the details of it. And so, uh, you know, what, what, one day, if you are so inclined, um, we could have a more detailed conversation. If you think that your story is one that would help others, you know, everything that I do uh, with my awesome people podcast is like I just want to have conversations with people in the hopes that those conversations will help somebody else, you know, like it's, it's yeah. like, that's kind of like, I feel like we owe it to ourselves that when we go through life's obstacles and ups and downs that um, if we are able to bounce back up, that then mm -hmm. we can then reach down and, and make sure that we help somebody else come up, even if it is just by, by talking about the story, you know, so one day. Exactly. Yeah. Of course, of course. Uh, I'm gonna, I will let you know also and, um, the people who's listening, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, I've been working hard, really hard for been taking me around three years, but I'm almost done with my book. Um, uh, I've been writing a book and it's uh, hopefully coming out hundred percent coming out this year, but I'm hopefully that right now, uh, thinking you know, about to come out in the, this summer. So, uh, this summer, but by latest, latest December, but it's hundred percent will be out. I'm almost finished. I've been working on this for uh, like two, three years. It's 300 pages where wow. I'm going into details about, you know, everything I went through, uh, how I worked it out and, uh, you know, how I uh, managed to get through it. And uh, it, it's two reasons I wrote this book. Well, one, one of the reasons was that, you know, it was some sort of a therapy for myself to let all my feelings, emotions out. I never, I think I never opened up myself for anyone uh, like the way I'm doing this in this book. Also, at the same time, I was thinking if I managed to just help one person, one person in this world to get through a difficult event in their life, then I'm happy. So this is exactly why I'm, uh, you know, writing this book to be able to send a positive message and uh, help someone who gone through something difficult or going through something difficult. I mean, that's that's impressive, man. And I, I I hope that when the book comes out, we tie it into having you as a guest on the Awesome People podcast because, like, just I always thought that you know, that, you know, I'm so proud of what you've been doing in your career, and and now hearing more of your story, I'm like, man. He's even more awesome than I thought. And so I hope that when the book comes out, we'll have you as a guest on the show where we want to sure. make sure that everybody hears about yes. this book, reads it, and um, you know, is inspired so that you touch more than just the one person that you're trying to touch. I have no doubt that your story is able to have a profound impact on a lot of people. So um and 300 pages is no joke, man. I mean, that's that's <laughs> a 
that's more than a book. That's that's definitely a trilogy right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, you know, uh, I would be honored to be on your show again. Of course, why not? And uh, my whole purpose with this book is to send out this message. So uh, we'll be glad to join you again. Sweet man. So uh, be, before before I let you go, though, there's a yeah. couple things. So one is. Um, you know, you've, you've obviously done a, a whole wide range of different things that you've been hosting. Uh, the latest gig that you've had in the past few months was being the host of the Persia's Got Talent program. Uh, yes. Tell us a little bit about the experience of working alongside, you know, Ebi and Arash and Manuel Afshar and, and our, Nazani Noor, who we're going to have as a guest, Tara Grammy, who we're going to have as a guest. Yes. Um, you know, just what was your experience being a part of something that epic with so many a great, great cast of, you know, crew. You know, um, like, like as a host, this is the biggest job you could get, you know, the, the Persians got talent. It's, uh, and uh, to be able to be part of this historical moment, you know, for the first time ever, a Persian show being part of a global uh, event. Yeah, uh, that yeah. was huge. You know, we never ever had something like this before. You know, they got the official license of the Got Talent in UK. You know, everything had to get proved by Fremantle and Psycho Entertainment. So, you know, Simon Cowell's company, and right. you know, it was done through professionals uh, who already done doing Idol and Talent in Sweden. I got Talent in Sweden, so it was you know amazing, huge project that the. I got able to be part of and of, obviously I feel honored and it felt amazing. And already we, we're seeing the results. You know, the, the person who came on the second, uh, like the, the winner choice, uh, the, the person who, who won the People's Choice Award, she's already doing gigs now. She's becoming, you know, celebrity. She's doing, uh, she's releasing tracks. The number, yeah. uh, the person who came on the uh, Yosamin yes, yeah. yes. and the number third, Negar, she's also performing now in different places. And, you know, so it's it's already um, getting uh, the purpose of the show to create a platform uh, for new talents. And we already seeing the results after just one month <laughs> the show is finished. So it's amazing, you know, uh, hopefully next year, uh, it, I, 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 I'm not 100% sure, but hopefully if we get another season, you know, more people can join because this was the first year, you know, you haven't marketed enough. And now we'll reach out to more people, more Persians, more Persian speaking people around the world, hopefully even from Iran. So it will be amazing. This is a start of something very, very good and big uh, that we all Persians should be honored and proud of. Oh, 100%. And I think that, you know, a lot of people who, perhaps have different talents, you know, they, they wanted to kind of sit back and see what the show is all about before they yeah. invest in auditioning and stuff. So once they see the quality is yes. the same level as the, the global brand, uh, yeah. you, you're going to, the second season of auditions is going to have yeah. incredible talent coming, no doubt about it. So it'll be very well, interesting. Imagine, you know, we did this during pandemics with, you know, restrictions and different stuff and, you know, everything didn't even go as planned and it became, you know, so good. So I um, uh, really hope that we get another season and uh, to do. To, I'm, to I'm, I'm, if, if, if not, let me know. I'm going to call Simon. I'm going to be like, Simon, what the hell are you doing? I say, how put you, you guys? And what do you have to think about? Sign him up for a second year. Um, yeah. But yeah, so I mean, uh, we do actually have uh, Nabi Rezwani who, who did a, a very nice Nuru's recorded message that um, I, I, I promised him that I was going to play after your segment. Uh, we actually yeah. accidentally played it a couple hours ago, but it's, it's such a great message that I don't mind uh, replaying it. And, you know, he's such a such a nice, kind person uh, yeah. with such a great heart and, you know, such a such a patriot, you know, and, and trying to make Persians proud, you know. Of course, he's not only a very good performer, he's also a very good uh, speaker as well. He speaks very, you know, deep and you, when you're around him, uh, you feel this special energy. Uh, it was incredible, you know. He was my yeah. golden buzzer and he won the show, so. <laughs> and yeah. Mine and Tara's golden buzzer, I always <laughs> say mine. <laughs> I'm sorry, yeah. <laughs> Tara's uh, golden buzzer, yeah. It was our golden buzzer and she won the show, uh, he won the show and, you know, we're very proud of him. And uh, a lot of people don't know, he made it all true to the second place in Got Talent in Norway. And yes, yeah, but he still, you know, 
came back and you know gave it another chance and you know worked his uh, you know worked hard and he won uh, the Persians got talent. No, it was amazing. No, uh, and uh, I'm a fan of him as myself as well. That is great. Well, I mean, for for those of you who um, watch a show, you know, he definitely is a talent, uh, very very unique talent. And like you said, when he speaks, you know, you want to listen because it's like you yes. can literally hear it straight from the heart, you know. And so yeah. uh, once once we say goodbye here, we're gonna play his recorded message. Uh, but right. Father, uh, you know, I, I really want to give you the virtual stage to send any kind of message that you would like to uh, Persians around the world, uh, you know, for Noru. So please feel free to say yes. whatever you'd like. Well, two things that I always live by that I think everyone should live by is one, number one is if you believe in yourself enough, everyone else will believe in you too. That's something that I live by. And number two is always, obviously, never give up. No matter what you go through, no matter what you do, no matter what happens, never give up. Always believe in yourself. You know, uh, without hopes and dreams, we're nothing in this world. Uh, that's a very important message. And also, I would like to say something in Farsi as well. Uh, <laughs> I really appreciate it getting the opportunity to get to know you a little bit, hopefully get to know you in person in, in flesh when the pandemic is settle down, uh, you're, you're a class act, man, you're, you're great at what you do. And I know that it doesn't, um, I, I know that you're somebody that really works hard to make it look easy up there. You know, it's very easy to make people think that, oh, but I know that, I can tell that you're somebody who works on their craft day in and day out. And the reason why you're getting the roles that you're getting is because those who know how to pick talent, they, 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 can, they can see talent, you know, and that's talent that actually, you created because of hard work and it wasn't just right there. So kudos to you, my friend. And uh, I really, really hope that this year is, is one that is full of great things for you and your entire family, my friend. And if there's anything that I can ever do to support you in your continuous growth in your career, I always, uh, you can count on me in your corner, man. You know, I'm a, Thank I'm a you fan. so much. Thank you for having me in the show. Uh, it was a great. Uh, we'll for sure we'll be in touch. Take care, man. Bye bye.